Hey guys, AEW Dynamite was amazing, uh, as it has been for the past couple of weeks. Uh, and AEW Rampage is coming up this Friday with Super Card of Honor as well. And I'll give out a video to the Super Card of Honor that'll be coming on. That'll be coming either Thursday night or Friday morning. One of those two. It'll, I'll also give you ROH television results. Um, which I'll probably do Supercard of Honor predictions on there. And then Supercard of Honor results at, by itself. And I'll probably also do... Actually, I'm going to do Rampage results. Then ROH TV results. Then I'll make a whole video on Supercard of Honor predictions by itself, and then I'll do Supercard of Honor results by itself. That's what I think I'm going to do. I might also do an impact in uh, Multiverse United, only the strong survive. I might do a prediction on that too. But anyway, let's get to the good stuff for this episode. Uh, AEW Dynamite. We were live. They were live in St. Louis, Missouri, um, which it was a pretty good crowd tonight. So that that helped. Um, we first saw Jack Perry take on Matt Hardy. Uh, in what was a pretty good matchup. I predicted here Jack Perry would win, and so he did. It was a pretty good matchup, though. Darby Allen and Sammy Guevara were in separate places backstage. Maxwell Jacob Freeman, MJF, came out. And by God, was MJF and Jack Perry good out there. Both of these two are insane. Jack Perry has improved so much on the mic as well. It's crazy. And I am really enjoying this feud right now. It's, it's, it is going in really well right now. I, I like the fact, and we also, I also like the fact that we don't know what's going to happen next. Like what, is, is Darby going to come out? At any point, is Sammy going to come out at any point? Like, we don't know. And that's what I like about it. That's what I like about this feud that's going on right now. We don't know what's going to happen next. For all we know, if Jack per with Jack Perry and Matt Hardy's matchup, Sammy could have gotten involved in that matchup. Like, we don't know. That's what I like about this. It was a really good job there. Then Alex Marvez was in the training room to interview Don Callis and Omega. Don Callis tried to explain what happened last week, and he said he felt foolish that he grabbed Hangman and asked Kenny Whitey to assume his friend would attack Don in the process. He says he's going to talk to Hangman and make everything right. And a disappointed Omega tells him he didn't ask him to do anything. And he rushes off. Back from commercial, we got a vignette of Acclaimed and Billy Gunn trying to... I mean, with uh, 2.0, and they're trying to get... in 2.0 is trying to recruit the Acclaimed and Billy to the Jericho Appreciation Society. Um, looks like next week we'll find out uh, if they do. Um, it'd be a really weird, it'd be a nice swerve if they joined the JAS. But it'd even be, it'd be an even bigger swerve if they joined the JAS and then like a month later or two months later, they turn on the JAS That'd be an even bigger swerve. I don't see that happening, but that would be an interesting call there. 
We saw BCC, also known as Blackpool Combat Club, which was Claudio, Cassignoli, John Moxley, and Wheeler Yuta. They took on Don Castle and the boys. Don, Ca Don Castle and the boys, they made their entrance. And but Blackpool Combat Club, they came and attacked them uh, during the boys and Don Castle's entrance, which pretty quickly... Um, Claudio pinned one of the boys, which is very upsetting. I cannot believe how short that matchup was. Then we got a video package recapping uh, Kenny Omega and Jeff Cobb's mat uh, story for the matchup. Hangman was interviewed backstage. He. He said the Young Bucks have been better. Nick has a separated shoulder and Matt had a partially torn bicep. And then he blamed Blackpool for the attack. Don Callis then showed up and said that he was embarrassed about last week. He also apologized that because he, he didn't want to get between them. And he and before... Uh, Page could even shake Don Callis's hand. Blackpool at Comet Club attacked Hangman and beat him down. Callis kept his hand extended, but then Mox slaps his glasses off and stands on Don's head. And Don Callis actually started bleeding after that. I'm very curious as to how this storyline's going between Blackpool Comet Club and the Elite. It's been very well. It's been done really well so far. Uh, Hangman reuniting with the Elite uh, is a big possibility. Uh, but again, it's it's one of those things where you don't know what's going to happen next, and that's what I like about uh, when with the storylines, these kind of storylines, you don't know what's going to happen next, and that's what makes it so exciting because you don't know what's going to happen next. I kind of feel like that. Um, there's going to be a swerve that happens where Don Callis the whole time was setting this whole thing up and that he sent Blackpool Comic Club to take the Young Bucks out, that he sent, that he was trying to get everyone to think that Don Callis uh, was the good guy here. Uh, I think he's, I think he's p planning something very disastrous. That's what I think he's doing. But, but it's again, it's one of those things you don't know. Maybe Don Callis really did trip or whatever he said. Maybe he really is trying to make things better. We don't know. But I feel like there's a swerve going on. And I'm very excited to see what happens next. And moving on. Uh, Jeff Cobb and Kenny Omega went one-on-one -on -one for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship. And Kenny Omega, he came out to his Devil's Sky theme song, which is his New Japan theme song, which I thought was amazing. I'm a little sad San St. Louis didn't really pop as much, but uh, uh, there, the, the, there was a good point made that St. Louis didn't have a huge crowd. There was like 5,000 people there, but even so, I would have expected a bigger pop. I popped like crazy. I had goosebumps. It was crazy. I did not see that happening. In that predict, on my prediction there, I, I saw Kenny Omega getting the victory, and I was right. He retained the... IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship, but it was a really good match. Uh, Kenny Omega came in with another banger. It's amazing. Maybe not as good as him and El Hijo, but it was still really good. Jeff Cobb did really well. To he almost went for that tour of the islands, and I was like, he's gonna hit it, he's gonna hit. No, he didn't hit it. It, it was a good match. It was a lot of big moments. 
no involvements either within within Blackpool Comic Club until after the match, which I thought was an interesting thing to to to, to think about. And I really thought Jeff Cobb was going to land the one-winged angel, but he didn't. Oh, it was a good match. It was a banger match. Blackpool Comic Club came out. They attacked Kenny. Brian Danielson showed up, and he helped Omega up. But while Omega was backed away, Brian Danielson then threw a psycho knee to bring down Kenny. And I was like, I called it. Because I saw that coming a mile away. That was an incredible moment too. So now I'm kind of starting to see a pattern here. I, I, I think what's going on here is we get Blackpool Comet Club versus the Elite, the reunited Elite with Hangman in a 4v4 match. That's what I think is happening here. And I, I'm all for it. That is going to be a big matchup if that does happen. But we don't know. So we'll see. We had a promo. Well, we had a video package, my bad, for the guns and FTR with their titles versus the, the careers match. That's next week. Uh... The guns cut a promo mocking FTR for taking 19 years to get to the point in their career. Well, it took them about a year and a half. And they respected uh, I mean, they they respected FTR, but then they said to never meet your heroes and that they now hate them. And then they said it will be top guys out for real. Then we saw um, the Butcher go one-on-one -on -one with Orange Cassidy for the international championship. This was a better. This was a, a, a better match than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be your your basic, normal matchup, but it turned out being pretty good for what it was. Uh, Butcher really got to put in his work there. Uh, it was a good. It was good. Uh, everything in that matchup was good. Um, okay, maybe not everything, but there was some. There was enough good moments. I was ha I was satisfied for how how it how it worked, I guess. But Orange Cassidy, uh, I said, would retain the belt, and he did. I want Orange Cassidy to defend the belt against the Blade as well. Maybe not next week per se, but at some point, maybe in two weeks. Sounds good to me. We had a promo from video from Jade Cargill and her entourage complaining about Valkyrie. Mark Sterling had a court order drawn up. They'll sue her if she uses uh, the quote unquote jaded in her match on Friday. After commercial break, uh, Juice Robinson cut it a promo on Action Andretti saying how every punch in their match is going to be meant for Ricky Starks and that he should pull up a chair and watch the example he makes, knowing that it's a small pinprick of the kicking he's going to receive, that he's going to give Starks next week. So next week, Juice Robinson will take on Ricky Starks. And uh, this Friday, Juice Robinson will take on Action Andretti. We'll get to that later on in the video, though. Ruby Soho will also take on Willow Nightingale. Uh, this matchup was okay. Uh, there were some good moments. 
But again, I'm not really too excited about women's stuff. It, it, it's just the booking for the women's division. It's gotten better, but it, it's it, they still aren't giving the women a lot of time. Which sucks, because they have a good women's division. But it, nothing's really being done. The only feud that seems to be going on right now is the outcasts and the homegrown talent. That seems to be it. And also Jade Cargill and Tyle Valkyrie. But that's it. That, that's, that's the only rivalries that seem to be going on right now. And that's, that says a lot. Take a look at... Um, all these other women that are basically doing nothing. Hikaru Shida is an example. Nyla Rose is another example. Thunder Rosa, I mean, I know she's injured, but she's not doing anything. And in Diamante, she's not doing anything. Serena Deeb, she's not doing anything. Do I need to continue? There are so many women out there that are, aren't doing anything. And it's upsetting. But anyway, I see, I said that Ruby Soho would win. She did. She had some antics, so I'm not too surprised. The outcasts then took beat down Willow Nightingale as Ruby grabbed a steel chair. She was going to put her leg she was gonna put her leg through it and, and hurt her with her leg and then Riho and Sky Blue they tried they come to make the save sort of. The outcasts they beat Sky Blue and they forced Riho to her knees. Then Jamie Hayter comes to make a save. Forearms for everybody, the hate breaker on Tony. Then she gets away from the hater aid. And then Jamie helped Riho to her feet. And there was a moment of respect for both of these two. Next week, Jamie Hater is taking on Riho. So there is that. Then we had a height reel for Powerhouse Hobbs. And then finally, we see Adam Cole make his in-ring return, his long-awaited in-ring return against Daniel Garcia. This matchup was good, and I figured there'd be some ring rust. Uh, for a good chunk of the matchup, you could definitely tell he had ring rust. Near the end, though, he started to see seemingly started to get back into the swing of things. Um, but it was a good matchup for what it was. Um, uh, great job for both of these two. Uh, uh, there were a couple of moments where I was like, oh my God, is he okay? Like, I was worried. I, I didn't entirely know if he was um, good or not. But then I was like, yeah, he's probably fine. Um, one thing I thought about earlier was, what if Adam Cole got injured again right after that matchup? Like, and he was gone for another nine, ten months, or even worse, his career was over. Oh, that'd be terrible. But I predicted Adam Cole would win, and so he did. Daniel Garcia came out to a new theme song. This might be another one of those one-off moments, though. I don't know. Either way, it upset me. I, liked, I wanted to uh, sing Daniel Garcia's normal entrance. It feels right, knocking your head left. Anyway, Adam Cole had a good matchup for what it was. Britt Baker showed up. Black and Gold Dreamers came down as well. Jericho came in to the entrance. He had concern on his face. He checked up on Garcia, turned his back on Adam Cole, and then he walked up Garcia to the aisle. So it, I don't know what this means, but a Jer Jericho versus Adam Cole, heck yes, I'm all in for it. 
Double or nothing? Mm, I don't know, but there'd have to be a buildup for it. But they've got plenty of time for a buildup for that. That would be a good matchup. I would love to see Jericho and Adam Cole. That would be a good matchup. Adam Cole seems to be becoming the top baby face that AEW needs right now. They have a top heel, which is MJF, and they don't. They have a couple of other top heels right now, which is Jericho and the Jericho Appreciation Society, but they don't have very many top baby faces right now. And Adam Cole being that top baby face is great to see. And Britt Baker being a baby face is, again, is also great to see. Um, I know Adam Cole kind of turned baby face mainly because he made his re long awaited return but they could have just kept him heel, but the fans really wanted him back. They really uh, wanted to see him again. They probably would have cheered for him either way. So it was a, probably a good call to turn him baby face in the first place. It was a good show. Rating wise, four out of five stars. It was a good show. The only complaint I had was the women's match. Like it wasn't anything too special. And, of course, Dalton Castle and the boys getting squashed. That made me really upset. You're breaking my heart. But anyway. It's now time for AEW Rampage predictions. First, we'll see Sammy Guevara take on Kinosuke Takeshita. And I see... Sammy Guevara getting the victory here. But we'll see. Kings of the Black Throne will take on the best friends. I see Kings of the Black Throne getting the victory here. The, the best friends taking on the House of Black for the trio's titles. Sign me up. That sounds like a good matchup. Taya Valkyrie will take on Marina Shafir. Uh, Taya Valkyrie will get the victory there. I see, oh, by the way, I see Kings of the Black Throne winning against the best friends. Juice Robinson will also take on Action Andretti. And in that matchup, I see Juice Robinson getting the victory there. But it should be a good matchup. Uh, Action Andretti has looked really good. Uh, him beating Jericho was amazing. And him and Ricky Starks. Uh, with their feud with the JAS was pretty good. Uh, Action Andretti had a big boost after that. I It sucks to see that he's probably going to lose to Juice Robinson, but um, Action Andretti is definitely still young, and he's got a lot to learn. Um, so it doesn't really matter too much, I guess is what I'm saying. But what do you guys think? Let me know. But this is TPW Talking Pro Wrestling, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye and good night. Bang!